The next part of my painting includes what we call the color block-in. And the purpose of blocking in is to lay down the general composition and color harmony without having to worry too much about those tedious details. Those will tend to come at the end of the painting. If you block in the colors with too much saturation, the painting could very well become overwhelming and you could spend the rest of the painting just trying to tone it down. So in terms of color block in, um, I'm going to share with you some of my concepts and the way that I work with color. In the last video, we were talking about creating the sketch, and one of the final things that I like to do with the sketch is to apply a, um, an effect called Express Texture and base it upon the paper. So how do you do that is you'll go over to the Effects menu, choose Surface Control, and choose Express Texture. And immediately in the default uh, is usually where I end up uh, choosing. Um, the grain setting is about right, the gray threshold and the contrast is working just fine. You can see that it darkens some of those darker values in the painting and gives an overall tonality to the final sketch that I can start working with. And so for that reason, I apply Express Texture, uh, Express Texture and then just go ahead and select the OK option. With my sketch now in order, I'm ready to go ahead and lock this layer. So I'm just going to head and lock the sketch layer. If you want to change the name of a layer, all you need to do is double click on it or just click on it and you will see that it's highlighted and then you can type in what you want to call it. If you're going to be working with several layers, it's a good idea to stay organized that way and uh, rename your layers. Painter Essentials does not have the ability to bring up an image as a reference image as you're working. So there are a couple of options that you can choose. You can either open your original photo and just keep it at, at a small square in the corner, or you can use some of these little apps called Quadro, which will allow you to open up a reference image that you can use to uh, review color, uh, shape, form, pattern, and of course, uh, shadow, and really will help you as you start to develop the painting. When I get to talking about color here, one of the most important things is the the wrap sometimes that using reference images get you in digital painting. And I don't um, aspire to that. I think that actually using a reference image, if, you're, if you don't have the ability to go out and sketch uh, from real life or outdoors, is being able to bring that photo back and work from it um, with certain constraints. Why I use a photo reference, uh, photo reference is an important aspect in developing your painting. And it allows me to understand the subtle shift in colors, values, and tones um, as I start my painting. And it helps me to choose color in terms of color relationships. And that's key in training my eye to see color and value and tone uh, as I go uh, forward and start to um, uh, develop my painting. So if you open your reference image, you can open your mixer pad and then using the little sample tool here, you can go through your image and just sample some of the most important colors that you feel are prominent or those mother colors that will go on to create the different tones and values and color relationships that uh, you need to um, be able to uh, show in your painting. So with that said, once I have my sketch in, the next and very important thing is to tone my canvas because there's nothing worse than starting a painting with a canvas that's white. It's very, very intimidating. Um, and also, it doesn't help you to start seeing values and colors uh, in terms of what's going on in your uh, photograph. So I'm looking at the colors that I've sampled um, on, my, on my mixer pad here. And um, 
I, I'm thinking that, you know, I want to be very mid. I want to be in a color range that is going to make me happy and feel good as I go forward and start to develop. So I'm picking this color that is a little bit on the gray-violet side. It's very neutral. Gray is a great color to start with because it really will uh, help you pick colors going forward. And those relationships and colors become very, um, they stand out very well for you and they will help you choose colors that work well. One of the really cool things about Painter Essential is the fact that the new Harmonies panel has been added here. And with this Harmony panel, uh, I can't tell you how important this is, being able to choose a color from your mixer pad and then get a complete value string uh, right below that. If you have the chance to use the Harmonies panel, I really suggest you do it uh, because again, when you pick a color, it's gonna make it much easier for you to choose the next color, whether it's lighter or darker in value to uh, work into your painting. So with that said, I've got my a color chosen and I'm going to select my canvas layer and use the shortcut called Command F or Control F and we're going to fill uh, that layer uh, the canvas layer with a solid color. Now, on with this option comes the ability to work with the opacity slider. And many times what I'll do is, is bring it down just a wee bit because I may not uh, want it to go quite that far, that dark. And when I'm looking at my photograph reference and I'm looking at the color that I've chosen for the sky, I want that value to be pretty close uh, because that sky is going to stay and become very important as I develop the rest of the painting. So looking in terms of value at this blue color that you see in the sky and then this background, background color that I'm chosen here which is kind of a blue violet, I'm just going to stick with that for the time being. Now. It's important to mention that when you're working on the canvas and you're actually developing your uh, background color on the canvas layer, it doesn't mean that you can't go back into it and change it totally at any given time. So keep that in mind. But in my process right here, what I'm w concerned about is making sure that my value of the sky is primary here because that's going to help me to, to go as I start to work from the back forward it's going to help me see those values a little more clearly. So my opacity is set at about 46.1%, 50% is probably fine and then select OK. And that way now I have a nice uh, neutral color to work with and to begin building my color uh, and getting my uh, blocking in my colors. Um, I am using the Intuos Pro pen here. I go between the art pen and the pro pen, but for this particular painting I'm just going to stick right at this point with the pro pen and um, going to go ahead and add a new layer and we'll come back to this at a later time uh, in probably in the next video and this overlay which um, I have here also I'll talk to you about using overlays uh, in your final process as well. So on this new layer here I'm going to uh, begin by working from the back uh, to the front and I'm just going to start doing what we call blocking in color. The brush that I'm going to be using for that is going to be in the artist's brush category and it is called the Sargent brush and we're going to be working with that. And you'll notice that um, I'm actually going to be working very, very large with this, with this brush. And I'm going to move a few things around here, make this a little smaller so I can get my, um, have a little more painting space here. I do not like a cluttered workspace. I don't like to be uh, distracted with lots of custom palettes and this that and the other thing so I really like to 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 just paint so uh, in terms of color I'm going to start by working with and sampling some of these colors and again 
Love this ability here for the ability to see these different values here. This is a complementary color scheme. This is a monochromatic light and a monochromatic dark. And if I'm going to be using these colors, then I'm going to lock them also because I want to stay and maintain that color scheme going forward. Okay, so I've chosen the color uh, that I want to be using and I've gone ahead and locked the harmonies panel so I can work with these different values in here. And I'm again, I like uh, starting pretty large with these brushes. And I'll move into uh, darker values here. And again, th there's nothing um, that's really detailed about this. Um, I'm just putting in color and uh, working through some of these values that I see in my uh, photo. And this really is just a kind of a quick uh, approach, but it's also giving me I move in some to some of these other colors here. I'll take these <clears throat> locks off because I want to be able to go into these different um, values that I see here. And once I get some of this block of color in, And again, I'm using a very, very big brush. This is um, this is really how I work. <laughs> it's not it's what you would call kind of messy, I guess, but it's really about just blocking in different values as I see them or as I want them to be. Um, and I think this is important to mention is that you don't want to um, let yourself be ruled by the painting or by the photograph either. You want it to um, influence you but not totally to the point where um, you can't make some of your own decisions in your work. And when I've gone about this far, okay, I, I move over to, let me move this down, to the blending brushes. And I like this brush called the Coarse Smear Blender. And I use it really big, okay? And I use it, again, as uh, sort of that blocking in uh, brush to where I'm taking color and moving it around and playing with color. And I'll continue to do this for the whole painting until I have my basic block in of color established. And not until I have done that do I move into detail. And I'm going to take the sketch layer off so you can kind of see what starts to happen here. A little smaller brush. And nothing is really heavily defined at this point. And I, this is your background, your middle ground area, and then the foreground area I've yet to go into. So I'll put my sketch back on, and I'll go back to the sergeant brush. And again, I've got some nice, strong, you know, some really dark values that I have to consider in this area here. And I'm going to do a little bit of smaller brush work with this tree here. And I want to establish basically where that tree is going to be. And you can see that there's nothing detailed about this. This is all heavy blocking in.
So I'm establishing background, middle ground, and foreground. And again, back to the coarse blender. Nice big brush. And again, just doing that blending of color and value. So again, I'll take my sketch layer off. And this is where I start. This is oftentimes where I begin my detail.